Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning, church. Good morning. As it has been my honor and privilege to be a father, I wish all who are fathers in this place to please have a happy Father's Day. Welcome to the Church in the Gardens. Worship this morning will be led by the Reverend Dr. Fred Weidman, Dr. Sonny Nabel, our music director, and the ever-present Rama Warawantu, helping us stream online worship this morning. I am Ira Apsell, your liturgist, and Charlene Apsell is also a song leader. If you drove here this morning and do not have a parking pass on your dashboard, immediately go see a greeter and put one in your car. If you're worshiping at the Church in the Gardens for the first time, please fill out a visitor's card, give it to a greeter, or put it in the offering plate. You can find one in the pews. Finally, please silence your mobile phone. I said finally, but I was lying. There's a bunch of announcements. <laughs> the most epic Garden Players concert ever, June 23rd at 5 p.m. in the community house next door. We're celebrating 20 years under the direction of Bettina Hershey, and a whole bunch of folks from Church in the Gardens will be performing, including our friend Sonny Nabel. A new, a new members class is scheduled for June 29th. Uh, at 10.30 a.m. and new members will be received into our membership at our Sunday morning worship on June 30th. Please contact Reverend Fred, you can find his email in the bulletin. We have a talent show coming on. Sonny, you wanna? Sure, well I think you've probably heard me say it before but if, if not, uh, please think about participating in the Churches Got Talent show. Uh, we know you have a hidden talent. We'd like to see you do it over at the community house on June uh, 30th at 4 p.m. There's a sign-up sheet in the back. Thank you. Most importantly, our continuing feeding mission. Gifts of food are urgently needed for Monk Works, our Ridgewood neighbor. Please bring canned goods and non-perishable donations. Leave them in the sanctuary entrance. Please pray for those in need of healing, all who are grieving or suffering any loss of any kind, and for those in residential care. Reverend Fred. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the Church in the Gardens on this fourth Sunday of Pentecost, Baptism Sunday, Father's Day, and the Sunday prior to Juneteenth. This is indeed the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome Cassandra and her family and all who are here for baptism. We welcome her father, Christian, your first Father's Day. And we welcome all fathers that we've heard and all who serve as father figures in others' lives. We welcome all who are here in house and online, and a special welcome to all who are worshiping with us here for the first time. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Let us pray. O God of life and new life, O God of the joy of baptism and life in you, we ask you to bless this day. Bless our worship service. Bless the one being baptized, and bless all of us as we experience your grace and renew our commitment to sharing your love with each other and the world. And let everybody say, Amen. 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 Please join me in the call to worship printed in your bulletin and stand if you are able. I will begin. It is good to give you thanks, O God, to sing praises to your holy name and to declare your steadfast love. We sing for joy to our God, our rock and our salvation. Amen. Amen. Please turn now to your black New Century hymnal. should be in your pew next to you. Uh, the hymn number 12, 
I sing the mighty power of God. remain standing as you're able and join with me in the affirmation of baptism as found in your bulletins. If you are not already baptized, I invite you to join in and take this as an invitation to consider baptism for yourself. I will begin. Praise to God who gives us life, calls us to life and life abundant, forgives our sins, and sets us free. In you, O oh God, we find joy. In you, O oh God, we know truth. Amen. And now I ask all of us present, in response to God's saving grace, do you renounce the forces of evil and recommit your lives to Christ? We do, and ask for God's help. Do you intend, according to the covenant of holy baptism, to be in community with your siblings in Christ, to join in worship and meditate on God's word, to share God's love and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. We do and ask God's help. O God, who sets us free and makes us whole, rekindle in us your gifts of faith, hope, and love. Amen. 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 And now the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please share with one another a sign of peace. Peace. Peace, happy Father's Day. Peace, nice to see you. Peace. May all be seated, and, and baptism family, uh, I want to invite as we enter into holy baptism, Cassandra to please come forward, and as you come, please bring your parents, Teandra and Christian, 
and your godparents, Kayana, Ashley, and Johnny. If you would all please come forward. And let's gather over in here. Yes, sit, sit where you're seated now, because they, they've got enough time. We'll gather over in here. And as they come up, let me welcome you all and welcome all of us. The church welcomes children just as Christ welcomes children. We have the gospel story of people bringing little ones to Jesus and the disciples tried to stop them. When Jesus saw what was happening, he said, let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them. For to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, who does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. As we'll see in our gospel lesson today, Jesus has much more to say about the kingdom of God. The sacrament of baptism is an outward and visible sign of God's love that holds and enfolds us all. The good news that God reaches out to and calls us to live together as beloved children together in the way of Jesus Christ is for all. Baptism with water and the Holy Spirit is the mark of our acceptance into the care of the body of Christ, the church. It is the sign and seal of our participation in God's forgiving and healing kingdom, as Jesus called it, and the beginning of our growth into Christian faith and discipleship. I have now several questions, beginning with the parents, then the godparents, and then all of us gathered. So beginning with Christian and, where's Kayan? Kayan. Okay. Do you desire to have your child baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? If so, say we do. Will you encourage her to turn from the waves of separation and chaos and to turn to the way of freedom of new life in Christ? If so, say we will with the help of God. And then answer similarly to this question. Will you teach her that she may follow in the saving and healing way of Jesus Christ? Amen. Do you promise, according to the grace given you, to grow with your child as a disciple of Christ? and to help her be a faithful member of the body of Christ by celebrating Christ's presence, by receiving the gifts of the Holy Spirit, by embodying God's kingdom in all the world, and by offering the nurture of the Christian church so that she may affirm this baptism. So please say, we do with the help of God. We do with the help of God. Amen. And now to the godparents, Kayana, Ashley, and Johnny. Do you as godparents Promise diligently to journey with your godchild and her parents in fulfillment of their covenant that this child be instructed in the way of Jesus Christ. If so, say, we do. Mm -hmm. Amen. And now to the congregation gathered. Do you members and friends of this church, representing the whole church of Christ, receive this child into your love and care? And do you promise that so far as in you lies, you will uphold and encourage her parents and her in the fulfillment of this covenant? If so, please say, we do. We do. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, gracious God, for the gift of creation called forth by your saving word. Before the world had shape and form, your spirit moved over the waters. Out of the waters of the deep, you formed the firmament and brought forth the earth to sustain all life. In the time of Moses, your people Israel passed through the Red Sea waters from slavery into freedom and crossed the flowing Jordan to enter the promised land. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus the Christ, who was nurtured in the water of Mary's womb. Jesus was baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, became living water to the woman at the well in Samaria, washed the feet of his disciples, and sent them forth to baptize all nations by water and the Holy Spirit. By your Holy Spirit, O God, bless this water. By your Holy Spirit, O God, save and make whole those who confess the name of Jesus Christ, that sin may have power over them no more. Create new life in the one baptized this day, that she may rise in Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
By what name shall your child be called? Cassandra. Cassandra, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, one God, Father, and Mother of us all. Amen. And now I invite everybody as a traditional part of the baptism service is to lay hands on one baptized. If you hold out your hands Lord Cassandra. Son, child of God, may God bless you for life and life abundant and God forever. Amen. Amen. All right. And let us now pray together. The prayer is found in your bulletins. And forgive me. Here we go. Maybe hold that for them to see and we can see right here. We pray together, the prayer of unison prayer is found in your bulletins. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the gift of your child, Cassandra. We pray that she would ever know your steadfast love and healing power and the gifts of your Holy Spirit. Bless her, her family, and our whole church family as we experience and share your love. Amen. Amen. And Christian, if you're willing, hold her up so everybody gets a good, good view of her. Hey, Cassandra, welcome. Amen. All right. And now let us sing. Our first reading this morning is from the second letter of Paul to the early Christians at Corinth, chapter 5, beginning at verse 14. For the love of Christ urges us on because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all so that those who live might live no longer for themselves but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. The Gospel reading for this Sunday is from the Gospel of Mark. It comes from the end of chapter 4, which is the great parable chapter in Mark. The reading begins at verse 26. Jesus also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout, sprout and grow, he does not know how. 
The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, and then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable will, will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. This is the good news. May God bless the reading and the hearing and the understanding of this holy word. Amen. Amen. Well, I haven't even started preaching yet, and already I'm going to apologize. I had meant to invite the children up front to get a good close view of the baptism. I even thought ahead, reserved a few here, but I blew it. I hope you got a good view of the baptism because I'm going to invite you right now to simply go right to Sunday school and start enjoying your time there. I see Christina, you're nodding. I think you're teaching today. And uh, so please, kids, head right to Sunday school. Thank you so much. All right. And welcome. Have a great time. Now, there we go. We see you. Yeah. Last week, we celebrated the baptisms of two dear little ones, Hugh and Henry, and today we baptized precious Cassandra. Next Sunday, we're going to celebrate our Sunday school kids and our Sunday school program. And then later next Sunday, as we've heard, the garden players are celebrating Bettina's 20th anniversary as director of that fine program for children and youth in what's billed as the most epic concert ever. <laughs> Sonny, you'll be performing, as we heard, and our church choir. Okay. All right, so we're looking forward to that. And then the next Sunday after that, June 30th, is our new Members Sunday. We'll be bringing in and welcoming several new households. And it's open and affirming Sunday in our denomination, the United Church of Christ, as well as in other denominations. And of course, our church now is formally an open and affirming church, welcoming all people of all sexual orientations and identities and of all races, ethnicities, and all other ways that people identify. We are all God's children. Our gospel lesson for today is all about the kingdom of God. God. We heard about the kingdom of God in our baptism service. It's all about how God sees us and the world and calls us to live together in the world. As St. Paul writes and as Jesus teaches and shows us, there are no divisions in the kingdom of God. We are all God's children, period. Oh, and did I mention that that same Sunday, June 30th, as we've heard, is also the church's talent show. I'm even performing in that. So apparently it's true. Everybody is welcome in this church, <laughs> no matter what your talent. And then the Sunday after that, July 7th, is a communion Sunday. All are welcome at the Lord's table, the table of grace. You bet. And as an added bonus, that same Sunday, our seminarian Andrew is sitting right there. You'll be preaching for us that Sunday, July 7th, and we're looking forward to that. And then, and I'm going to stop after I mention this, the Sunday after that, July 14th, we'll again be celebrating two baptisms. And just to put a spin on it, it'll be the baptisms of two adults. It's all great. And it's all about how God makes us in God's image to live together in God's great creation and calls us all as God's own. And why am I going on about this? For exactly 
that reason. God makes us in God's image to live together in God's great creation. And on this Baptism Sunday, let us affirm that God calls us as God's own, just as sure as God said to Jesus on his baptism day, you are my son, we, with Jesus, through Jesus, are all children of God. Jesus calls us, Jesus saves us, Jesus shows us the way. For the love of Christ is the title of this sermon. For the love of Christ could be the title or the theme of any or all of our lives. For the love of Christ is how our first lesson began, as we heard Ira read it. I want to get this out of the way right away. If you grew up like I did, you might have heard that phrase just a little bit differently around the house or elsewhere. Someone whacks their thumb or bangs their knee, for the love of cr But that's a different story. We'll talk about that another time. Now, let's get at it this way. St. Paul writes in his second letter, the Corinthians needed two letters. They probably got even more than that. If you take a class in seminary, you'll learn about that. St. Paul writes in his second letter to the Corinthians, for the love of Christ urges us on. The Corinthians, God bless them, needed to hear that, needed that reminder. You see, they seem to be good at what a lot of churches and nations and other groups are good at, dividing up, separating themselves into different and sometimes warring camps and factions. The ones who like this versus the ones who like that. As you read through the letters of Paul, to the Corinthians, you can almost see and feel the divisions forming, the different camps. On some matters, Paul shares or tries to share what he would consider the right answer, the right way to go on a given matter or topic. On other matters, he doesn't even seem to care. makes no matter what particular choice they might make, he seems to be indicating. What matters is that wrong-headed move towards division, towards splitting up. No, for Christ's sake, no. For it is the love of Christ that urges us on, urges us on together. He goes on. Because we are convinced that one has died for all, then he keeps going, therefore all have died. Uh, uh, what? All have died? Really, Paul? I mean, here we have this beautiful child, Cassandra, with nothing but life and the promise of life ahead of her, and you have us talking and thinking about death? What? Well, not just any death. Indeed, the death that Paul is talking about here, Christ's death, frees us from death and the ways of death that so surround us. St. Paul writes in another passage, a passage that we talk about with everyone who is about to be baptized or to have their child baptized. And so we, Kayan and Christian, we discuss this. Paul writes in the letter to the Romans in a very mystical, spiritual passage. I'm just catching you. We just talked about this because you're one of the two adults who's going to be baptized on July 14th. Can everybody say amen to that? Amen. amen. It's great to see you there. All right. Paul writes this in this amazing passage. We have been buried like Christ in a death like his. 
so that just as Christ was raised from the dead, we too might walk in newness of life. So too we, like Christ, with the strength and the spirituality and the access and the openness to God, might walk in newness of life. Wow. And so St. Paul continues in this passage that Ira just read for us. Christ died for all so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for the one, that is Christ, who for their sake died and was raised. In Christ, we are a new creation. You bet we are. That's who Christ is. That's what Christ does. Let's start living like it. How do we start living like it? In describing the kingdom of God, God's ways of living and calling us to life, as we heard in our gospel lesson, Jesus talks about seeds and gardens and the miracle of life and the way that even a tiny mustard seed, the tiniest of seeds, Jesus says, when treated right, Jesus says, grows into a large shrub, Jesus says, I have a PhD in this stuff and I still don't know what a large shrub is. Is it like a jumbo shrimp? <laughs> but then Jesus goes on to describe the large branches we have some idea of that. The large branches that support life, other lives, birds and bees and things like that. Aha. No matter how limited or small we think we are, because God doesn't see any of us that way, no matter how limited or small we think we are, in Christ there is a new creation. In Christ everything has become new. Everything has become new. And so I want to end this reflection on these two wonderful lessons and on baptism and on the kingdom of God this way. Sisters and brothers, siblings in Christ, as the garden players look forward to their most epic event ever, I invite you to see your own life and your own relationship with God and Jesus as epic, the most epic ever. And I invite you to do as Christ suggests, sow seeds of love and care for yourself and for others. And while you're at it, while you're sowing seeds of love and life for yourself and others, absolutely stay connected and be part of us here. The Church of Gar uh, the Gardens, the Church in the Gardens, let me get our name right, was founded according to our covenant for the advancement of God's kingdom in the world. That's just what Christ was talking about. That's just what we are about. None of us is free until all of us are free. Fannie Lou Hamer said that. Fannie Lou Hamer is somebody worth remembering as we come up on the Juneteenth holiday. If you don't know the name, Google it. Fannie Lou Hamer. Nobody said it better than her, and nobody sings it better than the Blind Boys of Alabama and Ben Harper, on their gospel album, There Will Be Light, none of us is free, one of us is chained, none of us is free. Google that also. Or, you don't even have to Google, you could just stick with St. Paul. For freedom, Christ has set us free. For freedom, Christ has set us free. So do like Jesus teaches, sow some seeds of love. Sow seeds of love and they can, they will grow 
with God's love, and your seeds of love will grow and flourish and provide nurture and shelter and safety for yourself and others. That's life. That's real, full life with God in and for the advancement of the kingdom of God on earth. That's pretty epic. And let all of God's lovingly epic children say together, Amen. 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 Please turn now to your, back to your new century hymnals, the black hymnal, not the blue, not the red, not the green. We have a lot of different hymnals here, the black one. Uh, hymn number 425. And let us all stand and sing together for the fruit of all creation. Unusual for this church, I think I'm going to ask you to sit as we enter into a time of prayer because we have many updates and items before we actually get around to praying. Uh, first of all, our brother Rich Filatico is not with us this morning. Rich went to the ER yesterday with severe pain in his leg and unable to move his leg. I'm very glad to say he is home now. He has a diet. Uh, diagnosis, but as yet uh, little relief. Looking forward to following up uh, for further treatment with a specialist tomorrow. He and all who care for him are in our prayers. And Rich's absence, of course, leaves a hole for us uh, because he's so instrumental in putting our coffee hour together. So thanks to the deacons, Andrea, you're up there for getting coffee hour together for us in the lounge after service. Dawn Burroughs has been in our prayers uh, for weeks now, um, and I hope this is good news. Uh, I have not seen her this past week. She has left hospital and is now in a residential care center. Uh, we have that information in the office where she is. 
We have a special guest with us this morning who is soon not to be a guest, but to be a member of the family, Nafis Watkins. You are right there, and you are going to be joining us on June 30th with, with others. It is just... A joy to have you with us. If I can just quickly share, so you and I met when I would go to the Madison York home, which is where you are a resident, and I would go meet and pray with uh, Hannah, and pretty soon we were meeting and praying, and you were asking about our church, and there you are. So it is just a joy to have you with us. Now, our city has begun early voting for local primary elections, and our nation, of course, is looking forward to, if that's the right word, um, elections in November. Uh, we have at least one poll worker among us in our church family here. We pray for his safety and for the safety of all poll workers in our city and across the nation. This church, the Church in the Gardens, is part of the New York Conference of our denomination, the United Church of Christ, and within the New York Conference, we are part of the Metropolitan Association, which runs from Nassau County through Queens, up above the Bronx, and then my geography just runs out. <laughs> Goes up there somewhere towards Albany. Reverend Ruby Wilson, who many of us know at this church, has been serving as president of the Metropolitan Association and no longer is. We thank God for her service and pray for her continuing ministry at our sister congregation, Safe Haven UCC. This Thursday, there will be a special meeting of the association to elect a new president. We pray for all the candidates. We pray for our delegates, Ira Absol and Hal Christensen. I might also add other members of the congregation who will be voting. Uh, you, Charlene, voting in your role uh, with the conference. No. Your role in the Metro Association on the board. Yeah. You're part of so many boards, I can't keep track. Yeah. Uh, also, Reverend Bonnie McDougall Olson and I will be voting as rostered clergy within the association. Please hold that meeting in prayer. Pray for all of us. Now, I raise a prayer of thanks uh, today for Father's Day. Of course, I, uh, speaking for myself, am so grateful for my children and stepchildren and Today, June 16th, is Kerstin's and my wedding anniversary. So I thank God for her and for that. How long is your suffering been? <laughs> Twelve years. It's a, it's a silk anniversary, as I understand it. So, um, now, I, I wanted to show off a lot, but I'm just going to show off a little uh, I hope you've all seen the still sort of new, it's been up for a few months, the, the sign in our, our monument, they call it a monument sign frame, over in between the two breezeway doors. Liz Sheehan uh, designed a new sign for that, we put it in a few months ago, but we have to change it now, because now we are an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. So Liz, I'm happy to tell you and tell everybody, we got the sign. And uh, hopefully it'll be in there as early as tomorrow. So the next time you walk past the church, uh, look for that new sign, which looks an awful lot like the one that's in there now with just some added information and a, help me, QR code <laughs> over there. Now, the other thing I want to show off, but I'm not gonna be able, you're not going to be able to see it. If I'm on my game, I'll put this on the narthex table as I walk uh, out at the end of the service. Uh, this is a formal plaque. Uh, that we are an open and affirming uh, congregation according to our open and affirming coalition of the United Church of Christ. Um, if one of the hats you wear, Ira, you and the trustees can consider where to hang this plaque. That's for the House and Grounds Committee. That's for the House and Grounds Committee. Who's on the House and Grounds Committee? Amen. Now I'm going to ask us to rise as we pray together. Yes. That'll be in our prayers. And please, yes, thank you. And whatever doesn't come up in prayer, if you want to add to it, there will be time also for that. Thank you. Let us pray. O God of life, O God of love, O God of small seeds that grow into big love, we thank you for the joy of being family together in you. 
We thank you for real, deep down, centering love and joy, which are ours in you. We thank you for baptism joy, for the joy of this dear child, Cassandra, and her family, and for the joy of knowing that we are all together children in you. We thank you for the love and joy of fathers and all who serve as father figures in our lives and in the lives of others. Bless them, bless us, and show us the way, the way of true love and true support. We thank you, O oh God, for this church family and for every way we welcome all of your children and that we live into and live out and advance your kingdom in the world. And we thank you for all of our partners in ministry, remembering today especially the Metropolitan Association as it and as we prepare to elect our new president this Thursday. Bless that meeting and bless us going forward together in you. For our world, O oh God, we pray that your wisdom would guide all leaders and all peoples that all may have access to the things that make for life, food, shelter, health care, a living wage, community. For our nation, O oh God, we pray on this Juneteenth and every day that freedom, real freedom and opportunity for all would be our real goal for all. And we pray for all who are sick and recovering from illness and injury, including Dawn, Philia, Karen, Patricia, Amelia, as she prepares for a scheduled surgery, Millicent, Rich, Cynthia, Noriko, Karen, Alan, Cheryl, Marcelina, Jean, Connie, Sharon, Nancy, Anne, Dora, Jackie, and Terry. We pray for all in residential care, remembering especially Hannah and Nafis. We pray for those who are grieving and suffering loss of any kind, remembering especially our brother Jack Quinn and Curtis and all who are grieving the loss of Jack's father. All other prayers, O oh God, we bring to you as we hold them in silence or as we call them out aloud now. Hear all these prayers, O oh God, and hear us as we pray together as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we move into a time of offering, let me bring this invitation. God calls us to live in and to live out God's love in and for the world. Give to support the mission and ministry of our church to spread the good news of God alive in the world. The ushers will move among us. This musical selection is Come to the Water, text and music by John Foley.
God. These offerings are the seeds we choose to plant so our church may fulfill its missions. When these seeds grow, they remind us that we leave Sunday worship feeling refreshed, renewed by the spirit of love in this community, feeling lifted up by the words of righteous challenge. This haven, 
this refuge, this church, exists because we make it so by planting seeds. The gifts of our time, skills, our food, our love, and our laughter are the soil in which these seeds will grow and bear fruit. We pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior, and let all the people say, Amen. 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 And now let us turn back to our New Century hymnals one more time. Hymn number 575, O oh for a World. And let us sing uh, verses 1, 3, and 5. the benediction, I want to remind us about coffee hour in the lounge. Everybody is invited. Of course, I have to apologize for our architecture. It is not easy to get there. There are steps between us and the coffee. But please ask for instructions. If you don't want the steps but want the coffee, ask somebody to bring you a coffee. We'll figure it out. Now, as you, as we go out to sow the seeds of love. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you and the whole world peace. Amen. Amen.
Oh yeah, that. <laughs>